Okay, to use a code behind page, first of all, understand each web page maintains a relationship with this code behind page. This is a page that lives in back of our HTML and takes care of the actions we want to happen programmatically. Now, this relationship between these two pages is established using the at page directive. So again, we see one of these at directives. Now, this will appear at the top of the ASPX page, and it will include the word code behind to basically tell ASP.NET which page to associate to this page. And we can use uh, source or SRC uh, to point to a code behind page, and when we do that, it causes JIT compiling to happen. Now, go back to about the second or third section of videos in this course. We talked about JIT, just-in-time uh, compilation. This means that if we use source, SRC, to point to the code behind page, then when this thing gets requested from a browser, it won't compile the whole thing. It will compile just enough to make it functional, and then it will only uh, compile functions and different subroutines and stuff as they're needed. Now, if we omit the SRC portion, it causes the entire page to be pre-compiled, and this is the Visual Studio .NET default. This is one of those places where you can tweak it. This is kind of a performance a knob, if you want to think of it that way, that you can turn to increase uh, performance if you're having a problem, if you're writing some really large pages with a lot of application code and so forth. I can use the inherits keyword. You'll see this quite a bit. This allows the AXPX page to inherit from the code behind page. We'll get into that a little bit later. Maybe it's a little past the intro portion. But here's what one looks like. And I'm going to go show you one in Visual Studio in just a second. But notice that we've got the um, page directive. Language is VB. And notice it inherits from the project web form. Uh, the code behind page is default.aspx.vb. And then we've got source on here, which means we're going to get just-in-time compilation on this thing. So let's go out to Visual Studio, and I want you to see one of these things. And notice, uh, you may have not have noticed it was there uh, a little bit earlier. Let's go back to our ASP.NET video example, and I want you to notice the things that were set up for you. When we added a web form, here's our web form, and we can drop our buttons and move them around and create the web page that we'd like. And notice Web Form 1 ASPX VB. This holds the logic for any uh, application uh, events or anything that I want to happen. Okay, so if I go back to Web Form 1 AXP, ASPX and look at the HTML, you will notice there is an at page directive at the top of the page. And notice what this thing has on here. At page, the language is VB, and you'll notice in Visual Studio that anything that has to do with these uh, uh, ASP inline codes is highlighted in yellow. It tells us that uh, the name of this code behind page is Web Form 1 ASPX VB, and so that's the code behind page that goes with this, and this inherits the Web Form 1 page, so we can we can access that now. If you um, notice now, we've got three places that we can see what's going on in Visual Studio. First, we have uh, the design of our web form, and this is where we lay our buttons out, move them around, put our stuff on here. Then there's the HTML version of it, okay? And then there's the .vb or C Sharp, whatever, .cs code behind page, and this is where all of our uh, application logic lives. Now, notice what this has given us very clean HTML layout. And if you remember, I told you a little earlier that used to, you know, we would start to add uh, things in here, much like this right here, where we'd, we'd have all this information and, and event handling and stuff uh, out here in our attributes, and these things just got nasty, and it was real hard to read and follow, and you couldn't even figure out what this thing was doing. Keep in mind, HTML was originally intended to be markup language, and the more code we stick in there, uh, the harder it gets and the harder the browser has to work and so forth. And so code behind is cool. You can do this in uh, using a notepad and using the web matrix tool I mentioned earlier, but you have to manually set this up. You have to manually create a file, manually put this at page directive up here and set this up. So that's what a code behind page looks like. Uh, I want you to notice that if I add uh, another uh, web form here uh, to this, then I will get a new one. Notice if I say add and add web form, I right clicked on the project by the way, 
and chose Add and then Add Web Form. You'll notice it's asking me for the name. I'll leave it as Web Form 2. And I open it, and you'll notice there's Web Form 2. And when I click on Web Form 2, if I double click Web Form 2, notice it automatically generated a code behind page for me. So there's my web form, and there's the code behind page. So if I go to my web form, look at HTML. Notice it put the page directive up here for me, and it's told me my code behind page is .vb. So Visual Studio manages all that for you, and it's really cool that it does it that way. In the next video, uh, we'll go a little deeper with this.